sizleri sevgi, saygı ve bu panelistlerle birlikte olmanın verdiği gururla selamlıyorum. Programdaki aksamadan ötürü biraz e, çabuk gireceğim konuya. E, bugün temsil ettikleri e, kurumların görüşlerini dinlemeye başlamadan evvel e, zor işi ben üstlendim. E, panelistlerimi e, kendi onaylarıyla sizlere ben tanıtacağım. Okay, I will introduce our panelists to you. Emine Hanım, uh, Emine Erdem is a lawyer uh, with an after-graduate degree for um, business administration. At the same time, a member of the executive board of uh, women entrepreneurs, and also in the international, the World Forum, she has also been a part of it, and she has an experience uh, in the private sector as well. Turul Günal. Uh, has for more than 32 years been working as the CFO, HR, uh, information technology, supply chain departments of uh, his companies, and he knows the sector and the company quite well, uh, human management or the Payon uh, Society has been a member to the executive board and a member of the TEDAR, the Supply Chain Society, uh, SEDAFET, uh, Sectoral Societies Federation, executive board member. The third panelist is a doctor, but throughout his career he has for three times uh, changed uh, the path and he started as general surgeon in medicine, switching to the private sector, taking various responsibilities, changed and verified his profile. At the same time, uh, was there in the establishment of in, uh, researcher um, medicinal products society. Since 2014, uh, has been the secretary general of researcher pharmaceutical companies society. Today, we will be uh, following this broad profile as a, uh, with a view to uh, the uh, sectoral societies and professional associations uh, with a collective action uh, perspective, what we can do uh, in collective action, what is being done in various societies. Actually, um, about the subject and the course of the panel, we talked to the panelists and decided on a framework uh, to discuss. If time allows, we will get questions, but um, please write down your uh, answer, uh, attaching your email address, because if we have a time problem, we'll address the questions later with emails. We'll start with Sedefet, and Mrs. Erdem will take the floor first and uh, the Federation of Sectoral Societies uh, is, you know, the federation of all the associations of societies with a sectoral uh, input. So the minor step that you can take uh, probably will have an influence over the social and cultural or the professional life of our country. Ethical and compliance problems and creating such problems in these companies, what do you think is the role of your societies and can you give us some examples for good practices? I'd like to start by introducing Sedefet. Thank you very much, Mr. Cholak, very much, dear panelists and my co-speakers. Uh, Thank you and hello. As uh, on behalf of the Sedefet Executive Board, uh, I would like to express my gratitude to all of you and our distinguished uh, attendees. I'd like to thank Tate uh, for opening up such important topics to debate on this platform and for just giving us this medium where we can exchange opinions. Uh, the Sectoral Societies Federation, Sedefet, uh, has uh, 
has been comprised in 37 sectoral societies. These are the societies that are active in economy as representatives of 8,000 uh, enterprises. Uh, well, given the condition, uh, we have the chance of exchanging opinions in uh, the striking sectors of our economy. Under the umbrella of the Federation, we have the chance of uh, collaborating in a uh, common act with the members. Uh, from the very first day, we've been concentrating on the interests of our country and for the sectoral players. We can somehow consider uh, as a leverage uh, in our sector. Also, in link to the societies and our members, uh, we uh, are engaged in their activities as well. Um, uh, but Common Act is not a new concept in uh, economies since the hunter and collective societies it, it has always been considered as a more powerful act to, get, to act together rather than individual action. In this respect, there are many groups, cooperative societies, associations, cooperatives, or such other collaborative uh, for forms of being together, so because they can be stronger. And in, uh, today, uh, there are many threats in, that are putting the world at danger. So altogether, we're trying to find a solution to these issues. Uh, considering, you know, the crises of the time, global warming, climate change, health problems, these are all the issues that we are all seeking a solution out. And, uh, we keep asking questions to each other. Therefore, the public universities, civil society, and uh, you know the uh, business world has always influenced uh, the, uh, the the way to lead uh, the uh, problem. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, we keep speaking about sustainability, knowing that uh, it is not possible for the financial capital uh, to work alone from uh, the suppliers to business partners. If we need to play the game with the rules, we need to incorporate social capital within whatever we do, uh, knowing that the sector of players are uh, influencing the reputation and the ethical degree that they are complying with. Here, our transparency also increases the value of companies. As we all know altogether, um, it is rather about uh, going beyond plans for earning money and making people earn money, because essentially the concept of success has been going through some rapid change in this uh, in this time this is what we see was what we experience especially um, this is a maybe a landmark that makes some companies more successful than others it's not merely their revenues or the profitability that will be measured but other mechanisms will be taken uh, to measure that uh, such as the environmental policies sustainable manufacturing processes, social and additional extra rights to be presented to the employees and the degree of such rights. And maybe beyond that, intra and extra uh, corporate processes, such as transparency, uh, social uh, responsibility projects, and of course, diversity and especially uh, gender uh, equality or uh, social equality. Um, so, in other words, when we uh, value a, a cor corporation, we try and look into all these aspects that I'm speaking about. Purpose is the most popular word recently, especially in the time of the pandemics. This has been one of the concepts that we spent some time thinking. 
it's about finding uh, the purpose of life, not only for individuals, but also for companies. It's extremely important. Uh, almost 20,000 adult consumers uh, were uh, tested in a survey for their uh, purchasing habits. There, 33% of consumers uh, emphasized uh, their uh, items such as social and environmental impact of the brands. Nansen's Global Survey uh, particularly focuses on uh, the concentration of manufacturers and companies to find a better world. And the consumers think, think that they expect uh, the uh, companies to be more transparent. Particularly, millennium generation expect the companies uh, to do good business. Only uh, those companies aiming only at making profit who are non-sensitive to environmental policies are not welcomed by the new generations. So the new generations care about uh, returning to the society. It may well be done on a uh, time and money spending activity and even a volunteer basis. Uh, this is the potential uh, generation coming up. Beyond uh, this criteria about making money, I think as a whole it's all about reputation uh, climate of that company. And our reputation is rather about the sustainability of our business. Our stakeholder relations also are affected by this understanding because today there is an environment uh, of uh, sensitivity towards the environment, human resources and the future. This is the way of doing business today and eventually uh, it is a manager, an institution or an employer who will need to keep pace with this understanding. Now, uh, those companies who have institutionalized their way of doing business uh, will need to uh, also spread business ethics and rules. And we can see many examples of that because probably my colleagues will be speaking about supply chains because this is their expertise. But when picking the suppliers, right, Turulbe, with your visions, uh, the suppliers will need to comply. As su in such a way, uh, the companies also try to match their partners with uh, their uh, ethical understanding. So we need an integrated approach there for the reputation management professionals we need to see. So we are speaking about a professional perspective in this leverage. Uh, today, the company is, if they want to survive long, um, they need to dedicate themselves to these preconditions since there is a parallel with that uh, social gender equality, uh, global uh, climate change, and all other problems will need to be considered in an urge to uh, make our uh, manufacturing sustainable. Therefore, next to the risks, other opportunities can be uh, discovered within all these challenging processes that we are going through. Uh, we now believe that the economy uh, will uh, also flourish with this social contribution. And one point to emphasize is that uh, with the experiences of unity and solidarity, I think both the society and the, co uh, the companies will uh, gain more. Uh, with the mentality of the economic life today, our objective of uh, being future-oriented uh, will be considered in our routine daily life, saying that I mean, just from the raw material uh, to the trace processes, uh, both human-centric and environment-focused ecosystem rules will need to be set for the future uh, model. 
in particular if we want to speak about a developed economy. Having a developed economy requires acting jointly and, of course, sustainability. And for social compliance and cooperation, I think this journey is key. Turning to the NGOs, the civil society, uh, of course, transparency, uh, ethical, rule-driven uh, uh, cooperation uh, would be required in particularly manufacturing processes. And the societies, I think, will need to attract attention to these aspects to their members. NGOs and uh, similar uh, fifth force uh, elements will have more relevance and also uh, influence over the society. If we want to create the ideal society, NGOs essentially must act more sensitively for the ethical rules whereby they uh, provide some control in, uh, over their uh, inner mechanisms. Uh, all these uh, behavior models and way of working essentially uh, indicate the significance of NGOs and if we can infiltrate into the companies and institutions in this way providing a positive influence uh, we can survive better. This altogether I think uh, may uh, provide a more fair way of acting in economy. Bay, these are all parallel to each other and the point of debate here is uh, the ethics and compliance program of the companies may only uh, work with collective uh, action uh, with the societies, you know, these are volunteer acts and volunteer institutions with no profit-making ideology and aim. And at the same time, we are performing a transparent and ethical way of working. This point, lawmakers, decision makers must be involved in this process where I have to say that they consider us uh, better. Within the same sector, we are running a competition-free behavior. In this way, uh, in the international markets, those sectors will become more powerful, and as we cooperate with the government, the sectors will become full-handed. Uh, this way, in this respect, our private sector can take a significant responsibility in providing this entitlement to the public power as well. So eventually, wrapping up, I, uh, as we stated at the outset, accountability, transparency. And since we've been discussing, I mean, uh, since one o'clock, um, essentially there are indefinite resources and expert opinion as to how the companies may uh, function as such. Uh, if you don't know where to start with or uh, on the companies and the factories, you know, there are some mottos such as the values and missions. Some companies may feel in hesitation, therefore, uh, you may refer to the guides and the uh, bulletins of SEDEFED, uh, the Rep Ethics and Reputation Society, and similar uh, societies. Thank you very much. Thank you for your contribution. No, not at all, because I would urge the others to look into that quite well. Uh, this is extremely important for people uh, to internalize and adopt it in their daily lives. Uh, of course, there are some sensitive targets of the companies which need to be respected not only by their employees but also by the public, by the society. I have full confidence in that. Uh, both the NGOs and Sedefet or Tate Life organizations will have a critical the role and responsibility at this very point. This is what I believe from the deep of my heart. And in terms of NGOs, I think that, of course, we can trigger improvements in the legislation. We may lead the relevant organizations into the proper acts. Uh, and as said, if it, we will do our best uh, to support the process and we will continue with it because uh, there is this possibility of coming to a common sense. 
and we are, have uh, been working in a multi-partite way, so we can bridge, I think, this responsibility with the strength of representation in the sector. I think these are very good examples of what we can do. This highly participatory um, consideration is extremely valuable, and in Turkey, both ethical and reputation uh, would need to be reinforced. This can uh, be recorded as our advice, and particularly catching up with international standards is extremely important. More experts, more resources, more efforts are needed. Because the economies that are going through challenging times uh, must be in a resource sharing environment. So we must be in chase, in follow up of our existing situation. Where do we stand? What kind of data we have at hand? What do this data point us to? Therefore, we need to start some policies to make a very proper analysis of the existing situation because otherwise no step to be taken will give us the desired outcome. In this respect, I would like to uh, thank uh, the organizers for inviting SEDEFET for, uh, in this uh, forum. Uh, it's been an honor for me to be a part of the session. It has made it possible for us to function as a leverage, as a bridge in this aim. Thank you. We have a lot more to do all together. Now I will move to Turo. Uh, you know, since one o'clock, um, we actually named the third parties with different names we call business partners, our suppliers, and stakeholders, and so on. Um, today, I think there is no profession or no business without any third party, right? Uh, therefore, as for the impact area of the compliance program of a company, considering also including the suppliers, I mean, if suppliers are also included in this, I think we can say the impact area is eight or ten folds more. Uh, it is possible that the uh, impact area is larger. So, at TEDAR. Uh, your society, what are you doing? Could you please touch upon that? Yes, of course, first of all, thank you very much. Uh, for, I would like to thank you all uh, for giving us the opportunity for being a part of uh, this organization. Thank you for all who contributed to the organization of the event and I've been following uh, the uh, forum, starting with uh, the introduction and uh, the keynote speech. Of course, Mr. Gelis and uh, uh, also we know very uh, well well, uh, Ms. Atikin uh, as well. Uh, all I can say is that with all our quotes, it's great to listen to all those. Uh, now, now, why uh, supplier chain management is the name? of uh, the company. Uh, on, on For in 10 to 12 minutes, I will actually sum up. Now, you know, there is actually the good of anything. Uh, this the start of the COVID, the supply chain, being so much at the forefront, as you all know. Uh, Ernest and Young and all others, McKinsey, as you all know, all mentioned about the restructuring uh, of the uh, supply chain, about how resilient the supply chain should be. And when we ask the question why this is the case, um, of course it may vary from one industry to the other, but looking at the overall industry or looking at uh, 50% of the turnover of the companies are and, uh, and um, as you all know, well, for example, if I pay a certain amount of money, 50 Turkish dollars is taken. And 60% uh, I can say there's also in the automotive industry, uh, that is the use of the supplier chain. So uh, I can say that if you can say, for example, one dollar at the supplier side, it is just two, two and a half dollars of sales that you should make, so as to make profit. Of course, purchasing is not so easy to make all these segments, but I'm not saying that compromise from quality, this is not the case, or the compromise from the principles that we have, that's absolutely not the case, there are several other ways of doing so, uh, we don't, we have very limited time, 
So I'm not going to get into the details. So we'll always take that as the example, as a role model, if, of course, there's something mature uh, about it. As for such societies, and the West, they started to establish it since 1915, 1920s, 30s, that they set up so many societies, and they had thousands and ten thousands of members, by the way. And um, the, the, uh, more, the more powerful the non-governmental organizations are, the better improvement that we have at different industries. You know, uh, looking at the societies, acting at the international level since 1915, what they are doing, of course, uh, they uh, um, assist in the regulations and so on. At the same time, they organize good national and international conferences and so. And, uh, of course, um, in uh, 2013 that we established our society, Mustafa Koç, at the same time, is one of the founders, Zeman, Bosch, Borusan, uh, the financing team and so on. As you can see, just because of, for the sake of sustainability that we're doing. And uh, once we take the institutions uh, supporting us, then it is possible to continue in a sustainable manner. As you say, instead of uh, Mr. Z uh, Mr. Siemens 174 years ago founded Siemens and said, uh, as uh, Mr. Gelli said, for a short-term profit, I will never sell my company, he said. And maybe you can, you know, adopt it to sales department or the procurement department. As we all know, Siemens company at the Sustainable Index always at the top, number one, number two. So it's also sustainability uh, as the core of the society. Ethical principles and in particular try to create an added value and therefore supporting the competitiveness. For example, we have 150 and um, 70, 80 members, uh, corporate members, and 15 uh, million uh, dollars of it uh, as uh, members uh, worth uh, of a capacity. And we became member to take uh, in 2015. Why? Uh, so as to convey a message to our stakeholders, because uh, you know we always talk over the procurement department, but our colleagues in the morning said. Uh, 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 code of conduct, for example. Code of conduct, right. Code of conduct is something like a must, not possible without code of conduct, but it's not. Uh, we're talking about environment, about equal opportunities, about working standards, about health and safety at work, about equal opportunities, and human rights that we're talking about, not about uh, bribery or so on. If you do not follow the rules of code of conduct, it's a part of our contract is met and also, we pay attention to the system that we provide training on this topic, deliver several conferences, touch upon those. We cooperate with universities on these things, and I will tell you it with. With PricewaterhouseCoopers, uh, for the last six years, we're doing two surveys, and uh, it was, uh, there is no second organization that is doing such surveys in a row. And then we also publish um, the, the journal, which is the second uh, only two. Uh, of course, uh, Shishajan, for example, Aselsan, all our members, so I cannot name all of them, but we cooperate with uh, very distinguished members, Serefet and Teh, um, and the Turkish uh, Commodity Exchanges and Chambers Federation, uh, with the German, uh, again, the Chamber of uh, Commerce, so we have so many stakeholders, uh, all known societies, and we cooperate with almost all of them, and uh, of course, Kagi at the same time, if I forgot to mention, and, um, so we also have a journal, and uh, Asla Ertekin is also an author, uh, wrote a um, article to our journal about business ethics, how. And uh, therefore, we said uh, supplier chain management. Emin Adam also has an article. COVID-19 could be an opportunity for gender equality. And for sustainable uh, supply chain, previous uh, president of Tate, Artur, wrote an article, uh, Sustainable Ethics is a Must. So these are all the titles of the articles. It is possible to name more articles on this. But in 2015, again, 
uh, the first uh, supply chain at the same time, uh, the uh, uh, president of the executive committee of again Siemens Finance Bank uh, discussed about the supply chain, uh, discussed about sustainable issues. Uh, in Ankara, again, Assassin is also a member to us, uh, had the very first uh, supply chain uh, meeting in 2021 in Istanbul, again, a web based uh, uh, supply uh, chain um, again, uh, meeting that we had. And with uh, the Kagider, uh, we have another event. Uh, the, in particular, the founding uh, members. Uh, who are uh, the procurement sectors. We source to be supported immigrant uh, entrepreneurs. Again, uh, we started an initiative especially uh, try to direct the immigrant entrepreneurs uh, uh, for the Swiss European, uh, again, EBR, the World Bank activities that we join, how we can have a better and resilient supplier chain uh, for the SMEs. And with Harvard's uh, business reviews, uh, a panel that we joined. And besides, uh, Institute of Supply Chain, uh, about human resources, environment, and society, and international webinar that uh, we joined. And uh, especially, uh, one of uh, the best, again, uh, supply chain management uh, institutes that we were built, uh, several good activities in Turkey that they have, and they're also one of our founding members. We provide training to hundreds of people, especially about category management about the principles and rules of uh, procurement and uh, about sustainability contract management. We have several uh, training as well. Uh, of course, the rules of ethics, again, in the supplier chain, also some training on, uh, again, compliance as well. Several series of webinars that we started and Tegu uh, also represented there about the Green uh, Deal, uh, again, uh, our uh, colleague, I think, member of the executive uh, board, uh, Altun, discussed about the Green Deal, and uh, for all our colleagues who joined uh, that conference with regards Green Deal, uh, provided a brief. What I'm trying to say is that for all our stakeholders in several different areas, we are actually open to cooperate with them. That's what we are doing. United Nations, at the same time, uh, announced it so clearly, uh, as you all know, said, uh, once we said sustainability, sustainability is something that must be um, on the top, can only be controlled over the supply uh, chain uh, of the uh, companies. Think about, for example, first level supplier, second uh, level supplier, if possible, they also have their own code of conduct. Uh, then what would happen? Then in the world, actually, once you actually have a major corporation, uh, even if uh, it's very close to a solution, once you have it, so I'd like to give the floor back to you. Thank you very much, Turo, uh, for this image. Actually, I kept you waiting for so long. I'm sorry for that. But uh, within the framework of this panel, uh, in our very final window, as the non-governmental organizations, one of our tasks, as you all know, is for the companies that we represent, we have to improve them, if possible, uh, to achieve a certain level of standardization. Uh, between the public and the private sector, it is very important to have enhanced communication and better cooperation. Uh, of course, uh, several examples are given and several things are done on volunteering basis, but if only the public and the private sector work together, it will be standardized, and this is only by way of the NGOs. Uh, the Society of Investigative um, Pharmaceutical Companies, uh, would you please uh, inform us on this? Thank you, Emre. Uh, I actually, uh, I will try to be timely and uh, keep it uh, short. I think uh, uh, you are one of the first person that introduced me the best in such a panel. 
Uh, I have actually two hats, one uh, being um, uh, as for this panel, I'm a medical doctor, and the second thing is that uh, I'm also Secretary General at the Investigative, uh, investigative um, uh, Drug uh, uh, again, Society. I think uh, that is the title, the uh, Investigative Pharmaceutical Company Society. So, uh, it is, uh, your question is very much relevant to drugs and medicine as well, or let's better say pharmaceutical company or healthcare or even healthcare provision can also be included uh, on this. Now, uh, once we said we are discussing about ethics and reputation, two interrelated topics, why we need these two terms, this is important. Everyone, all human beings, we all would like to be, uh, again, um, be in confidence, okay? Would like to trust each other. We as the human beings, at the very start of the civilization, uh, I mean, the very first time that we experienced living together, since then, since the start of the civilization, we actually live in under a certain level of consensus. Cohabitation, living together, means to identify certain common benefits, common goals, and to develop some common values, and at the same time, um, like, for example, being a hunter, collector, uh, then more complicated societies that you move to, uh, or task-based society, everyone has, a, uh, for example, different tasks. As we evolved in the history of human being, um, during that period of time, uh, there are institutions and rules and also an understanding of common values. Um, for example, this is what a state is, uh, looking at the state as a structure uh, with our own discretion, with our own will. Uh, what we're doing is some of the regulations, like the task of audit, uh, or, for example, we um, also delegate the task of conflict settlement, for example, to a, a common, a joint structure. This is how it is defined. As I initially mentioned, pharmaceuticals, healthcare, um, as you all know, both as an industry and as a service provision, and it is own industry, I would say it is much more important in the field of pharmaceuticals. Of course, important everywhere. Um, because uh, if you're asking me, this is all about um, disinformation. Why a disinformation? Because eventually the person that we all have to serve and, uh, is actually the patient. I mean, this is the reason why we have an entire industry. Looking at the healthcare industry, we are there just for the patient. Uh, the patient is at the focus uh, of the healthcare by seeing patient uh, and not someone out of the society. I mean, uh, not a group uh, as a result of a division of labor within the society. Eventually, we all uh, be a part of uh, that group. Um, this is about us, uh, everyone. So, once we said patient, patient is the person who actually experiences the problem, but uh, maybe the person that has the least information about the problem that he she has. I mean, not possible to provide medical education to the entire society. For example, even uh, medicine is actually divided into different specialties, as you all know. We only know about our, our, our own specialty, not more than that. So, uh, the person who is giving the decision on our behalf, you have to have full trust on that person, plus you actually have to fully rely on the pharmaceutical products. And medical, uh, between the medical doctor and those providing the products, there is actually an asymmetry uh, of uh, information. For example, uh, the medical doctor uh, doesn't know about how that specific medicine is produced and doesn't know about the plant where they are produced. At the same time, the medical doctor is relying on the pharmaceutical company. This is what we mean by trust, confidence. And one point, there is the management of this as a whole. But 
If everyone abides by certain rules of ethics, certain um, rules, set of rules, and if they prove that they abide by these rules fully from the very beginning to the end, uh, it means that uh, it is only possible if everyone is accountable at the same level. Otherwise, uh, it, it, there will be a conflict. I mean, there will be misinformation everywhere. And from this perspective, for the health of the individuals and the society, it would be affected a lot. Why? Because today, it is not 100% is not only in Turkey, but also in many parts of the world, like for instance the process we are going on, there is uh, somehow a questioned approach to vaccination. There is uh, mistrust. So it means that that feeling of trust has not yet been created in all segments of the society. Therefore, uh, we need more transparency and we need to explain to everyone how the rules are being set. At this very point, though, as an answer to your question, maybe we can say that uh, the NGOs um, do not necessarily also identify the rules of action for their own uh, members, but uh, considering all of the stakeholders that they get in relationship, they need to uh, impose some regulations where uh, it becomes maybe more important than ever. Because uh, it's not only the pharmaceutical companies uh, that are the manufacturers of the health industry. It's not only the recipients are not only the um, patients, it's also not only the doctors or the nurses or pharmacists. It's, a, um, it's an integral uh, structure we are speaking about and within that of course there are advocates of the patients mm, there are those um, uh, civil non uh, civilian uh, organizations that advocate for patient rights it is really important to define that framework altogether we do see examples of that in many uh, countries of the world and in Turkey indeed uh, we are not um, only aiming at uh, up uh, leveling ourselves but also the entire framework since the um, since the start of, of the symposium we've been talking about ethical codes rules and a way of doing business code of conduct um, in different sectors. These do exist not only in companies but also in societies. Uh, as uh, This is not only something that is peculiar to the investigative uh, pharmaceutical company society, but there is this structure in many other similar societies. We have uh, a structure of somehow um, controlling ethical, controlling or auditing per, per se, I mean, um, I'm just picking up the words because we try and see a separation of forces because there is in one side uh, the structure that makes, uh, that imposes those rules and it's the general assembly of these uh, non-governmental organizations and when there is any change or any modification in the ethical code you need to bring it up to the ethical board uh, where it will be watered and agreed upon so all the members of the general assembly are are uh, for it or against it it's quite clear and as for the sanctions to be imposed and the way that will be controlled we need to make sure that everyone goes in the same um, page so when there are some possible or potential violations, it uh, should be arriving at you. You need to keep open the channels. In IFED, uh, not only the members, but also uh, uh, other, uh, you know, outsiders may also come and apply to us. Uh, any health member, you know, health workers 
or public authorities may come and raise um, objections or some complaints to it, and the Secretary General or Secretariat General of the IFED may only decide to act for an investigation upon a denunciation or a reporting it receives. There is this process of sanctioning. Uh, once you um, prove that there is someone or some institution that is violating uh, the rules, you uh, question according to the intentions. Uh, there is a variety of san sanctions, such as mild to strong sanctions, depending on the impact. Um, and with an IFED, there is also uh, this mechanism where you can object to this sanction, and the person who is raising the complaint may find the um, the punishment uh, minor. And we also have a structure where you can object to the decisions. And this panel of the IFED is being uh, audited and also being run by a totally independent pharmacology professor outside. The reporter of the panel is IFDMA uh, that is based in Geneva, that is the International Pharmaceutical Manufacturers Society's Federation, IFDMA. Uh, we, there are four members uh, of the board that is running the, uh, the, the position of rapporteur to the panel that is making the preliminary uh, reporting, and then the investigations will be run over it. Uh, and as I said, you can uh, also object uh, to this and uh, within uh, this structures and uh, uh, representatives of the sectoral societies are invited a member of the turkish um, uh, union of pharmacists would be uh, uh, would be called and there will be a comprehensive a global uh, appeal process if and when any of the parties would decide uh, to raise an objection to the process uh, last maybe I, what I need to add is uh, Pharmaceutical industry is quite specific. It is already well regulated, not only in Turkey, but also in different parts of the world. Specifically for Turkey, the government is quite strictly imposing and regulating uh, and imposing sanctions over this uh, industry. Nevertheless, I believe that the sectors, all the sectors, uh, would need to make their self-control, self-regulation. And this self-regulation and this self-control would uh, bring a larger field of impact to you, uh, to a broader area, including the public. And essentially this way, uh, thrust in whatever we do would be created. This way, all of us uh, will have the chance of living in a very, in a healthier way. Thank you very much for, for the opportunity, Emre Çolak. Uh, thank you very much. I thought um, that it would be my uh, challenging uh, task to introduce you at the start of the panel, but uh, uh, already the panelists have uh, informed us, uh, just given information about uh, us, about whatever you do in Turkey, so it would be impossible for you to uh, make some concluding remarks. But now that I don't have in a managerial position in the society, I can speak as freely as I want. Um, the previous panels discussed uh, about the companies, attending companies, ethical programs, uh, how uh, the uh, societies are working. Um, but, you know, it's been quite a comprehensive session uh, where we understand that your um, NGOs are uh, following uh, the global developments, providing a flow of information to your members, um, and seeing that this awareness is present in Turkey, I feel quite confident that things are running 
quite well, quite smoothly. I would assume that within the current conditions, we need to be somehow optimistic about the fact that in time, these changes are uh, to come with the Turkish economy, reaching up to the desired position, maybe sooner than we think. Um, and I'm sure about it. I would like to thank all of you for attending the session, for providing information to all of our attendees, and uh, turning to the uh, moderator.